Uh, yeah, I do. I, I know a bit. Obviously, Jack's in a pretty serious way. He's probably, at the very least, syndesmosis ankle sprain, which is a nasty injury, but most likely broken leg, not dissimilar to Charlie Dixon. Um, so that will that will be pretty challenging for Jack, but he's done such a great job to get to this point. I'm sure he'll attack what he needs to attack, but let's not let's get all the information. But at the moment, that's what it looks like. And Carl um, is a medial ligament by the look of it. Um, again, we have to get the scan to see how, how how severe that is, but you can expect that he won't be playing too for how the next Jack few in weeks. The rooms, Ken? Sorry, how was Jack in the, in the rooms? How he's actually pretty. Deal with it? This is wrong. He, he was okay emotionally and stuff because of what he's gone through and everything else, but. But he understands it's a big challenge and he's worked so damn hard to get back to a point where he's just starting to build up some, you know, some credits and good on him. I say good on him for sticking at it. But, you know, he's got another challenge. He's faced plenty in his time and he'll face this one well. Well, does that take a bit of the gloss off the win? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You never, you, never, you never want to see anyone get hurt. You know, and I know they lost um, Kerno too as well. So, see high-quality players go down. The game hasn't... All the changes in the game hasn't stopped the injuries, has it? It's just such a combative game that they play and they put themselves in terrible positions at times but they're, they're just warriors both everyone that plays this game I reckon the way they go about it You might have lost that game last season Ken but this time you sort of had the, the gumption to prevail Yeah well I think you know we we set it up pretty well in the first half after a slow first quarter game but then we you know the conditions made it pretty challenging and, all, and it just comes down to a bit of luck when you get like that and you, some key people do something that are important and Carlton to their credit Got going a little bit in the third quarter. To our credit, we we just kept coming and found a way to, to win comfortably in those conditions. I think. And how important is the set to you this year? This oh, he's, transforming. His form, his form in itself says enough, doesn't it? You know, he's he helps us and Paddy helps him, and together they're going to be pretty hard work. But you know, they've got challenges coming. They always will. You know, and they, we're really, all I should say is we're really pleased that he's with us. How good is it to have Tommy Rockcliffe fit and firing compared to 12 months ago when he was just limping through those early rounds? Yeah, well, a significant player. Tom's an Australian player, so he, we know how good he can be. And, uh, you know, to his credit, he's been delivering on that in the early part of the season. The challenge is to, for like or us as a team, not, let's not talk about the individuals, us as a team, to consistently deliver week in, week out. That third quarter, Ken, was it just the case of the rain came and still kept trying to attack and didn't sort of... The yeah, I think we certainly overused a little bit. You know, we, we still we still handballed the ball a lot and, you know, Carlton won big... But they won crucial balls. You know, Carlton went to work on Rocky. They you know, said if he'll come up and take care of him and and slowed our supply a little bit. So they made some changes and they got on top. But to our boys' credit, they, they adjusted again and, they, you know, they were able to weather the storm, so to speak, and then come back and kick a score that was pretty good. Not being able to send the runners out as often, do that make it difficult to, you know, change things in that third term? No, not really. I mean, it made it challenging in the last term when we're two players down because you're, you're trying to figure out your rotations and that's where the players don't have any ability to handle that because they're used to having four on the bench. So that would be the only challenge for us. So, but, you know, we, we're pretty comfortable. We're, we're OK with that. How tough was it the last term when you get down to 20 and you obviously can't get the message to guys to have a break? Yeah, so what we do, we went to the 250-game player and put him behind the ball and... And let him go to work again, and Hoff, um, Hoff did what he did. But it's tough. But you know, we're, we're, you find a way. That's just what has to happen. And um, to the credit of the boys, we're in, you know, they're in good shape. It's a good time of the year to to have to deal with that, probably because they are quite fresh. That noise is loud. <laughs> it must be the Hoff Express. <laughs> Didn't make much of the milestone pre-game? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did with, with Hoff. He's a significant... And I thought the family, the Port Adelaide family did. The 41,000 turn up today, and that was great to see. You know, members' recognition round. They got all their flags going at the start of the game, and our staff did a great job to get all them out for them. But, you know, that's, that's really important that great people get rewarded. And that's the first time I didn't realise until this week that he hadn't actually played in a, a winning milestone game. So it was pretty important for the boys. You know, they've done Robbie last week. They did Hoff this week. You know, that's obviously... Um, really, really important people and have been long, long-term long players of our footy club. Butters and Rose are pretty important uh, touches uh, and goals. Yeah, you go OK, don't they? <laughs> pretty happy to have them. And Dersmer, I thought, too. You know, he's run all day. I thought all three boys. And Drew, if we talk about the first game, is from last week. And I don't think any of them had any problems backing up and coming again. And, you know, Zach, you know, had a couple of little challenges early on with a bit of, bit of attention on him, and that was good. He stood up to that, no problems. So they, you know, they're good, high-quality young people. The wins aside, Ken, have you seen what you've wanted to see in these first two weeks of the season? Well, it's probably important that it's not me that judge. I mean, I, I am happy with what we're doing at this point. But there's other people who... Most of the opinions come from outside us, so it's interesting what their feedback will be is 
will be important, but equally as important for us is that you know we've we've put ourselves in a place at in the pre-season to, to do some different things and we've attacked those things really positively and we've you know we're so far getting some rewards but again I'll say it again two games in it's a long season. Hamish sorry Hamish Harlett had a good game in the sample game last night. Yeah he did he did he played pretty solid Broad he played solid Dougal Howard Sam Gray I think had 36 and kicked four Jack Drango had 40 plus touches so there was plenty of good form underneath and you know I miss people when you say that but you know we're in a lucky position at early in the year that we have got some people ready to come in and you know, unfortunately going to lose Jack and we're going to lose Carl, but we might bring in a captain and a vice-captain. That might be where we get to. Or we might bring in, you know, a great young defender or a bloke who's played a lot of football for us in Sam Gray. So there's lots of options. But Ollie's still that close, is he, though? He'll be, he'll be close to play. Didn't you believe me through the week when I said he's about a week away? <laughs> <laughs> That's where he is. <laughs> I have a habit of telling the truth. It's a bad habit, isn't it? <laughs> we're expecting to be back, you know, and uh, he has to get through what he has to get through this week. And if he does that, I would imagine... Oh, he's playing. Sorry to turn, return to Watts, but if that's worst case scenario, is that season ending or? Well, it, without all the information, it, it could be. You know, it, it could be with a bit of luck. It could be six or eight weeks because syndesmosis injuries you can recover reasonably quickly. You know, whether you do surgery or not do surgery, most most of our stuff's based around probably surgery in that space. So that if you have surgery, you you can at least kiss goodbye to the first half of the year and probably you know two thirds of the year. So hopefully for Jack, he gets back. What's it about his character? And I mean, you've spoken about how he's trying to turn himself around off the field. But what do you think about his character that that will enable him to get back? And you know, oh, I think just think he's, he's a resilient person. He's look. He's, he said it last week when he got interviewed. He's been through a lot of stuff. He's really resilient. You don't you don't get through what he's been through in the past if you're not a resilient person. So he's going to call on that again. In you know, with an injury, this is a different scenario for him. But you know, I'm sure he's uh, he's capable of handling that and, and bouncing back.